Yeah. Right on the set. <laughs> <laughs> All right, she's gonna film this. Got back from Colorado. Go Broncos where it was very cold. I was there for Christmas with my family. Um, really cold where you don't really wanna go outside, don't really feel like going to the gym, and it was much easier to just stay inside and do a workout at home, because with all that candy and all that junk food over the holidays, still needed to get those workouts in. So, I'm gonna show you the workout that I did downstairs in my basement, a very small space, pretty crowded with my nieces and nephews' toys and things, but just wanted to show you how just with a few pieces of equipment and specifically a resistance band if that's all you have that you can get a full body workout in a very tight space. The resistance band I use is from ProSourceFit.com and you can buy it as a single band or as a set. I st strongly recommend using a set of resistance bands because then you can change the different levels, you can stack them together and add on more. And if you use my code HOLLY15 at ProSourceFit.com you can get 15% off of any resistance bands and any product actually in general. Uh, so I'll show you how to use it in this video. So let's go. Foam rolling just to get the blood flowing a little bit. It's freezing in this house. So foam rolling kind of helps get the blood circulating and warm up the muscles before everything that I'm about to do. Okay, all right, so I'm just gonna start with a quick up and down the stairs as many times as it takes for me to just get warm and my breath get going. This is great for home, anywhere I have a staircase, use that for your cardio to get warmed up. So I'm gonna use mostly a resistance band. I brought this home with me to Colorado. This is a band from ProSource. So these are great because it has a little door anchor that comes with it. So all you have to do is find a basic door and then you just stick it inside the opening where the hinges are. A little bit lower. And then close the door and then it stays right there. So I'll be able to do a lot of different exercises just with this one thing right here. I'm going to start with a little bit of a warm-up, which is called a quadruped or a bird dog, where you're on all fours. It's great for your core, great for your lower back, very gentle strengthener, but it's also a nice way to warm up because your arms, legs, everything is moving. Um, so I kind of like to start by warming up with that. So hands right underneath shoulders, knees underneath hips, opposite arm and leg come together, and then out, pulling with your abs, and then squeezing your butt when you come back. Start with about 10 to 12 of these on each side. Okay, so then I'm going to do more of a real core exercise. I'm going to start with this band in the door. You want it about shoulder height, so your hands are even with your shoulders. Both handles out in front of you. If that's too hard, you can loosen it up and just do one handle. Standing about shoulder distance apart, I'm going to twist all the way to the side, kind of pivoting that back foot, and just come right back to the middle. Out to the side, slowly coming back, fighting that resistance, because this will try to pull you back. So you're going to use a lot of obliques and core strength to keep from pulling back too quickly yourself stable. And do about 10 to 15 of these on each side. Oh. Okay, send band in the same position. Come down into a squat and do back rows. Holding the squat, so your legs are starting to burn just holding that position. If you want to, you can do rows this way too, close grip. Come up a little bit higher and hit the rhomboids more. Or lower for more traps and lats. And just do about 15 to 20 of these. Keep your core really tight, body nice and tall. And exhaling when you pull back. Inhale on the way out, even harder 
go nice and slow. So you pull back and slowly let the resistance go back. It's gonna really work that eccentric contraction and burn those muscles. All right, so then from there, you can just scoop right under those bands. So you're standing in front this time, arms bent at 90 degrees for a chest press. And then you're gonna add in the legs for more of a full body exercise. So rather than just your basic chest press, when you step forward, instead of just a stagger stance, you're gonna step all the way down into a lunge as you do the chest press. Come back and alternate legs, lunge, and back. It's gonna require a lot of balance, core strength, focus, and your body really learning how to work well together. And as you come down, it's really hard on these not to let the knee jet forward too much. So when you come down, you also gotta focus on lowering straight toward the ground so your knee doesn't move too far forward. So you don't wanna be leaning your body too far, but keeping up nice and tall. Focusing on pressing through the heel, using your glutes, and then getting that good chest press in. If you want to make it harder, just step further away from the wall. It's a great thing about resistance bands, you don't necessarily need to add on more weight or bands unless it's way too easy. You can just move further away for more resistance. Move the band down to the bottom of the door for bicep curls. But bicep curls, you know, they can be a little bit on the easier side. So I'm going to add a core balance disc to make it harder. So if the biceps are challenging enough for you, that's fine. If you want to add in a little bit more core and balance work, then adding in something like this balance disc is a great way to make it much harder, get your central nervous system more involved so that more muscles are working and your body has to work on kind of proprioception or body awareness and where you are in space. So with the band at the bottom of the door, palms facing up, knees bent core tight to stay balanced on this thing and then you're just curling up to your shoulders. Don't come all the way down <laughs> because you'll fall off uh, and lose the resistance. So you want to keep a little bit of a tension in the band. Slowly lowering back down, just to about 45 degrees, even 90 degrees. And back up. about 15 to 20 minutes. Okay. All right, so now we're gonna move down to the legs and get some specific glute work in. So I'm gonna scooch the disc out of the way and this is a little ankle strap that comes with this resistance band. So it's got a little hook for the carabiner and you're just gonna clip it into this hook. Now you can leave it this way or for me this band is not quite heavy enough to just do one. So I'm going to take out the other one, clip that in as well, set that aside. Then it just loops around your ankle, Velcro's on, just like that. And then I'm going to do a kickback. So I'm just going to kind of use this wall here for support, the door. Little bend in the supporting leg, core tight, and kicking straight back as high as you can. Just kicking back, squeezing that glute muscle, Bring the foot back in, and now you can use both hands for support, or just one. Kick back as high as you comfortably can without using too much lower back. And about 15 to 20 on each side. So then super simple change, you're just going to twist it aside. Now we're going to hit the adductors, a little bit more of that outer thigh area, kind of top of the glutes. Same idea though, so you're just slightly bending the supporting leg and kicking out as far as you comfortably can. You don't want to kick out so far that you're leaning your body just as much as you can, keeping your body up tall, supporting yourself with one hand. And you can always use a lighter band for this too if you have more bands available, so you can go up a little bit higher that full range of motion. 
So again, about 15 to 20 on each side. And you'll notice that your opposite leg gets a little bit of a workout at the same time, trying to keep your body stable and balanced. Just easily switch it around. Other leg, turn around, and same thing. I haven't done too much shoulders yet. So, you can use the band. I've also got dumbbells here, so I'm gonna show you a couple different shoulder options. I'm um, fit chest, back, that is getting a little bit of shoulders, but I wanna target those specifically. So one thing you can do is put anchor down the resistance band low on the door. You can either let this come all the way through for shoulder raises. So I'm gonna do some lateral raises out to the side. So for me, this band is too light if I let it go all the way. So I'm just gonna step on part of the band for more resistance and come straight out to the side. Feet just about hip distance or shoulder distance apart. You can also, if you have something more to hold on to, you can angle yourself and do it this way, which creates a little bit more resistance against gravity to make it a little bit more challenging. So you can do that for about 12 to 15 reps, depending on how difficult this resistance band is for you. Basically, you just wanna do as many as you can until that shoulder muscle that really starts to burn out and you can barely move this thing anymore. So that's option number one. Option number two for shoulders is some dumbbells. So you can just stand feet close together and lift both out to the side at the same time. So it saves a little bit of time on the resistance band. Additionally, rather than anchor the resistance band, you can take the resistance band itself, stand on it, and do this exact same movement. So that's another option with the band, or you can do this with dumbbells. Now these dumbbells are a little light. I'm at home borrowing my sister's dumbbells. So to make it a little bit harder and engage more of the body, I'm gonna bring in this core balance disc again, get balanced on there, and then perform those shoulder raises. So no harder for the shoulders, but it's going to engage my core, a lot of mental focus, a little bit of legs to keep myself balanced while I do these and get the heart rate up a little bit more. So depending on the weight, you can do eight of these, you can do 20 of these, depending on how heavy of dumbbells you have lying around. If you don't have dumbbells or a resistance band, you grab some water bottles and do it that way. Exercise, we're going to do mountain climbers. I love doing these because you can do them anywhere. It's a great core exercise. And you can perform them two ways. You can do slow mountain climbers, really focusing on pulling with the abs and working out the core. Or you can do them running, so you get a little bit of a cardio component at the same time. So, a couple different ways you can do these. You can use some push-up bars. Go this way. This for me is actually great because I have some wrist pain right now, a little bit of tendonitis. With push-up bars, it takes off some of the strain from the wrist from that this position, so it makes it a little bit easier to do. So the slow version is just pulling your knees in toward your chest. It's gonna look like this. Nice and slow, really squeezing when you pull your knee up. Or you can do it fast and run it. And I usually like to go for about 20 to 30 seconds on that. If you don't have push-up bars, you can use dumbbells, which is also kind of nice because there's a little bit of a balance component with that. The same thing. No dumbbells, no problem. Simply do them on the floor. Same thing. Don't need anything special to do mountain climbers, which makes them great. So, set up however you want to do it and go for 20 to 30 seconds. there you go. It's an awesome home workout. Go through that two, three, even four times if you have the time. You'll hit just about every muscle group. Get your heart rate up for sure. And you don't even have to leave home for it. So hope that's helpful. Let me know how it goes and keep checking back for more.